Welcome to our video today on applying Pitt and Fisher sealants. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assess the need for Pitt and Fisher sealants as directed by the dentist if required. Then we're going to explain the benefits of the sealant, describe the procedure if necessary, and obtain the consent of the client. We're going to evaluate each individual occlusal surface for sealant application for removal of calculus, stain, and plaque. We're going to assemble the appropriate armor materium and maintain the chain of, sus of sepsis throughout the procedure. We're going to make sure we have positioned ourselves and the client appropriately. So this technique we are doing today is applying Pitt and Fisher sealants when not using a rubber dam. We're going to polish the occlusal surfaces of the selected teeth with a non-oily, non-fluoridated paste. As you can see, Monica is using a brush end on her profi angle in order to get into those deep pit and fissures. We are going to flush and evacuate the oral cavity using the high volume suction. isolate the selected area for maximum effectiveness and client comfort. Today Monica is using a Garmer type clamp with two cotton rolls. If we were working on the maxilla, we would use a triangle to isolate the parotid gland. She's going to check the placement of the cotton rolls in relation to the hard and soft tissue, insert the saliva ejector, and then dry the occlusal thoroughly. She's going to apply the acid X according to manufacturer's directions. It is always important to read about the product you're using. We're using 38% phosphoric acid. And the product we're using is etch right today. And the manufacturer's instruction for etch right is to etch for one minute. But they all vary. So ensure that you are educated on the product you are using before you use it. She is then going to use her high volume evacuator to rinse the area. Again, you don't want X getting on the client's soft tissues, on their tongues, it does burn, it tastes, doesn't taste well. She has her suction tip very close to the area while rinsing. She's going to dry those occlusal surfaces until she sees a dull, chalky appearance on the occlusal. She is now going to apply, when she confirms that, jaw, that dull, chalky appearance, she is going to apply the sealant material according to manufacturer's direction. I'm just going to change the cotton rolls to the wet. And she will assess the need for new cotton rolls, and she's determined that we should have dry ones placed. Again, she is drying that area. According to manufacturer's instructions, today we're using twin pearl. She's going to concentrate the sealant in pits and fissures directly, but not touching those occlusal surfaces. You don't want your sealant to be high because then you will have to adjust it at the end. She is going to use. Um, an applicator, a cotton tip applicator, to flow that sealant material into the pits and fissures. 
getting out a little bit of the inside real life. She needs a little bit more on that. Just for a piece of tip, so she's added some more feeling. So go so use a explorer to make sure that there's flow into the sealant in the bubble. Now she is going to light cure the polymerized sealant material according to manufacturer's instructions. And Clinpro requires a 20 second exposure time. So she's setting, having trouble setting it, but I'll just do. We have the orange shield on to protect our eyes from the blue light and the client as well. This light is set for five seconds, so I'm doing it four times to make the 20 seconds to polymerize it. Smooth the surface now with the exposure for any missed areas. If there are any missed areas, she is going to have to repeat the procedure starting at applying the sealant material. She's going to floss the proximal surfaces to make sure that none of that sealant material has flowed into proximately. Looks nice and smooth in there. She's going to check for a cruise smoothness. Make sure there's no bubbles in the sealant material. Sometimes there, there can be bubbles that can occur. Looks nice and smooth. She will allow the client to rinse if needed, or give the client a rinse. She's going to check the bite with the articulating paper to make sure there's no high areas. If there are any high areas, we would need to have the, the dentist or the dental hygienist to come and remove any excess material. If there are any post-op instructions, you would give the client those instructions. And you want to make sure that you clean the tip of the light and handle with caution using a disinfectant according to manufacturer's instructions. Thank you, and that's the end of our tutorial.